Hello, everyone. Good morning. How, How are we doing? doing? Fire away. All right, Kevin, I guess I'll, I'll ask you the same thing I started by asking Don, and that, you know, listening to the players um, as they cleaned out the lockers, it was kind of a universal theme that they expect to be in the playoffs now year after year, given where the build is. As, as the, the guy who oversees the whole thing, should that be the expectation? And is this franchise and roster maybe at a point where that should be where the bar is? Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh – it's exciting to see our players uh, raise expectations internally. Um, I mean, there was a huge disappointment at the end of the year from all of us. You felt that you get close, you push so hard. Um, the players felt that the coaches, the staff, everybody, um, to not, you know, get in, it, it stings. And it takes a little bit of time to kind of take a breath, process it, and then, you know, turn attention to a lot of the great things that happened. But I, I love the, what you just said. Absolutely, we want our players having you know high expectations and believing that that that's what you get up every day working towards. So, um, look, nothing external, whether it's from media, fans, will ever be more than what we internally expect of ourselves and the challenges that we put on each other to raise our standards and to be better. And um, that's the way it should be. So what's going to make you better next year as you move this thing forward now? You, you've taken in everything. You know what you've seen. You've talked to your players over the weekend. What's going to make you better now? Well, I think, I think there's, a, there's a lot of components to that, Paul. I think um, certainly some individual players, hopefully all of them, uh, improve. Um, but there's certain ones that you would expect just by a little bit more experience, age, strength, uh, they'll improve um, their own individual games, which then collectively will help our team. Uh, I think there's areas that you know we're gonna we're gonna want to talk about. Um, I'm in the middle of a lot of these meetings now, whether it's individuals with coaches, um, staff meetings, and scouts, and just bringing everybody together to talk. You know, I think there's areas that we could be better at defensively, and you know, in front of our goaltenders and um, certain parts of our game special teams, all these things, you know? So those will be areas that we'll work on, um, we'll talk about. But I think at the end of the day, it's, um, it's really cool to see a group of individuals now that trust each other, that care about each other, that hold each other and themselves to a high standard and that want to be here. Um, it's a pretty big uh, difference from where we were a couple of years ago. And I can't tell you how proud I am of, of the way these, these guys um, fight for each other and, and care about the city. It's, it's special what's going on here. How do you feel about your goaltending at the end of the season, Kevin? And do you, would you be, I guess, comfortable to envision a scenario where you could have two younger guys like, like Levi and UPL um, work in tandem next season? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, big picture from the goaltending, I'd say um, really excited about where we're at, to be honest with you. Uh, if you look at uh, the way that well, I can, it depends where you want me to start. You can start with Craig Anderson and what he's done, and I think we'll, there'll be a lasting impression on our group that, that, you know, kind of the way he handled himself, it was great. So, you know, that's, that's exciting how our guys picked his brain, not just the goalies, the, the, the whole team. Um, you know, I think Eric Comrie had a, uh, had a really good start to the year. Gets the injury, kind of... Um, had his ups and downs, but it's tough. He didn't get in a rhythm. You know, that's a, it's just one of those things that um, was challenging for him. Um, UPL, I mean, if you look at where we were a year ago to now, and I've talked to you guys over and over about we believe in, in UPL, and he's young, he's learning, he's growing. Where was he going to get his games? We were going to let him kind of decide that. And when comms, you know, had the injury, he came up and – you know, he was inconsistent times, but the overall really solid for us. You know, he started a lot of games. He won a lot of hockey games. I think he won 17 games um, and showed progress. And I think sometimes we weren't great in front of him. Um, and if you're just looking at the, the raw numbers that everybody looks at, you know, we'd look a little deeper with certain things um, when we track goaltenders. But just, you know, you'd say, oh, I'd like to see this a little better or that a little better. Of course, there were some games that – Maybe we weren't great in front of them, or maybe they get a couple late goals, and you know that it's affected. But, but in terms of confidence and belief, really good with UPL. And then I think what Devin 
you know, if you go back to my previous press conferences over the last couple of years, you could tell uh, my excitement and, um, you know, just how I felt about him as a, as a player, as a, as a person. Um, and bringing him in and having him do what he did, I think, was pretty special at the end. I also want to make sure that people realize how good Mike Bales is. Um, he is very good at what he does, and he's got a great relationship with, with our goaltenders. He cares. Um, they trust him. Um, they speak in languages I don't understand sometimes. That's what goalies do. But uh, he's really good at what he does. I just want to make sure you guys know that. Kevin, how much can you, gl can you glean from just while we're on goaltending? Um, Devin, what, what he showed in his appearances at the NHL level this year. And I know you've been, you're, you're careful with how you handle goaltenders and you don't want to stunt their growth by throwing too much at them too fast. But I guess my question is, what gauge do you have of how NHL ready he is in terms of carrying a workload through the course? Yeah, the I mean, it's a, it's a small sample size, obviously, kind of coming in at the end of the year what he did. But um, his foundation of his game is tremendous. His athleticism is tremendous. His, his mindset's tremendous. Um, I mean, it's certainly, I'm sure you guys can see that he loves this. You know, he, you know stage is too big for him. Um, he thrives, you know, in these environments. And by the way, he played pressure-packed games. Um, just, you know, it's uh, pretty impressive what he did. So um, we would not have put him in a situation we didn't think he could handle and learn and, and grow from. Um, but, you know, to be honest, he earned it. And then once he performed, you could see the confidence of the team in front of him. And his, his, uh, he's got a great balance of humility and um, earning everything that he's done in his life, but with also a swagger and confidence that you need, especially at that position. So, no, really, really um, excited about him. Kevin, you're talking about that next year. This trajectory continues and you make the playoffs. I mean, as good as this season was, what guarantee do you have for next year? You want me to guarantee what we're going to do next well, year? Well, assurance that, I mean, there's, but there seems to be a level of satisfaction that this team made the, didn't, that came close to making the playoffs. What is the, the next step obviously becomes making the playoffs. And what assurance can you provide or what confidence do you have that this could happen next year for a, for a team that's been waiting for this long, but not this long. Yeah, uh, just ask the question one more time. I got I got a little stuck well, on I guaranteeing guess, something. I mean, what is that? I, I'll go back to what I asked Don. Was this season a lost opportunity in some ways? Is for all the strides John, you, lost the, opportunity for all the strides you made? Uh, no. For all the strides. But missing the playoffs, but because in, in that sense, is there? Do you paint yourself into a, a place where you need to make, make the playoffs next year? Um, all right, let's. Uh, so I guess try to answer parts of your questions. Um, lost, I could not disagree with you more in any way that this was a lost season. No, I it was phenomenal lost. growth by individual players from the team perspective, the steps we took, um, just the way our fan, fan base embraced this team and you started feeling the energy in the building again. Were we disappointed when we make the playoffs? Absolutely. Did we fight hard? Did we come up just short? And that, yeah, that's, that's tough, tough to swallow. So that part's disappointing. We all want that. I think that's what I said in the very beginning. You know, that's really, it's tough. I know that you guys all wanted it, we wanted it. Uh, the fans, but lost opportunity. No, I think there was an amazing gained opportunity. I would say the exact opposite of what our guys learned and the pressure that they had to go through and the ups and downs and feeling must win games and how to handle that being the youngest team in the league, having guys, and not just our rookies, not the Quinns, Paterka, Power, Levi, those guys, Krebs in these situations, but even the next tier of guys on our teams that have never been on our team, that's never been through something like this, was a huge growth opportunity. So, um, yeah, and now as he turns into next year, we wake up every day and want to be better than we were the day before, every single one of us. Um, that is what I continuously push within our organization. We have a plan. We're going to work it. Um, we're going to stick with it. And we're going we're gonna to try everything we can do every day to make this organization better. Um, so is our expectation next year 
to just that you're just going to wake up and, hey, you're magically going to be better. No. And if everyone ever said that, you're crazy. Like, no, you got to work for it. You got to earn it. And we're going to keep with that mindset. But, you know, we're not going to – clearly you have your opinion, your thoughts on what the season was, but we're not going to um, overreact or make decisions – um, for the short term, we're trying to set this up, John, for sustainable success. You've heard me say that before, and I think right now we've put some foundational pieces that are that are really important in place, and I can't wait for the next chapter in this team. Kevin, the playoffs have, in the past have looked like a different league compared to where the Sabres are. This is the first time in a while where you guys are close, you can see yourself in these games. As you watch and pay attention to some of these games going forward, what are you going to be looking for? terms of where you can fit in that group of teams? Well, I think, yeah, it's a, that's a really interesting question. I think um, you're always learning uh, what, you know, little little things you're seeing or what successful teams have that maybe the missing ingredient here, missing ingredient there. You know, I think the natural um, thing you always wonder uh, if you're not in the playoffs is, you know, how are I guys react in a certain situation or you're on the road and, you know, 20,000 people are against you and blah, blah, blah. Like, that stuff, you're going to feel that as, you, as we get there. Um, but it's competitiveness. You know, it's, it's making sure that our guys are ready um, because playoffs, it just goes up a notch. You know, so that's the stuff you look for. But I have no concern um, based on what I saw down the stretch that our guys won't be able to elevate um, and won't be able to thrive in the big moments because it's what you play for. We got a bunch of we got a bunch of young guys that love playing the game. They love coming to the rink. They love the spotlight in a good way. Um, and that's what it's all about. So I'm I'm excited when when we get there. Yeah, when you talk about defensively, it seemed what I saw when you lost a top four defenseman, you struggled somewhat. You didn't have a guy that can maybe step into that. Is that something you maybe would like to add and maybe have a more of a veteran guy that you could slip in there just to give you some – so if it happens, you've got some options and maybe be better defensively, reduce the turnovers, the coverages, the whole thing. Are you looking for that element to add to your team? Well, I think, you know, if I take a step back, and obviously it's right after the season, you know, there's a lot of time we'll have these discussions internally about – you know, sitting down with the coaches and our staff about where where they see individual players, where I see individual players, um, how we're kind of moving forward into the off season, what we're identifying, we're looking for. So those those conversations are starting, and they'll continue in the next days, weeks, months, honestly. But big picture, Paul, I think what's important is um, we have a really really good decor to start. You know, like when you when you think about. The age of our guys and the, you know, what I'll call them is your core foundational pieces are really, were set up very well. And every team's built different. You know, when, when I think about our team now moving forward and, you know, you have a Darlene and Power um, that can play, you know, half the game right there. And um, obviously Samuelson's growth and maturity and Henry Yokiharu is really coming along. And he's still, people forget, he's still a young defenseman. Um, that's a pretty good group right there um, to start with. So what we look to add, um, we're going to look to get better. And if we think there's something that we can do that helps our team um, improve, whether that's you know higher up your lineup or depth, of course we're going to look at it. Um, but I do think you can get caught too much in thinking about uh, you know trying to get this, trying to get that, and maybe missing how how talented and good our young our young decor is, and that's a pretty exciting thing for us. Is, it, is a contract extension for Darlene a priority for you since July first he can sign? Have, have those conversations begun? Uh, yeah, I've. I mean, you guys know my my style. Uh, I believe in um, when you have core pieces that uh, that you you feel are going to be very important f part of your franchise. Um, I like to be proactive. So both him and Owen, um, to me, are, are critical pieces of this franchise moving forward and um, certainly have, uh, have let their, their agents know how we feel about them um, and we'll work at it. I mean, these things, they're, they t take time. Um, there's, a, there's a process that you go through, um, but I couldn't, uh, I couldn't imagine those two not part of this long term. Kevin, how do you balance in the offseason knowing that there are 
jobs up for grabs and then there's veteran players who could come in here and you know make a big impact but also young players that still haven't kind of permanently earned spots in the organization do you have to account for the young players and say like eventually these guys need to get in how do you navigate that especially like specifically like Matthew Stavoy like yeah. you know it's either NHL or not next year. Like, do you plan for that? What do you do? Yeah, no, you for sure plan. But I guess, you know, you guys know my kind of philosophy on these things, especially with younger players. I never like to um, give a specific timeline or say, this is exactly how you're supposed to do it because this is what either everybody's always done in the past or, you know, what the maybe history would tell you. I like to look at it from a lens of, each one of these individual prospects is on their own kind of timeline and journey. What I believe in is not rushing things to where you're setting them up to be in over their head. You're setting, what I like to do is set them up for long-term success. Uh, so I think we've proven over the years when we believe a player's ready, um, they're going to be here and that won't change. You could name the prospect and I promise you, even if it doesn't look like there's a spot, when we believe it's the best thing for their short and long-term development, they'll be here and we'll find a way to make that work. I'm also very um, lucky because we have coaching staff that respects that and really enjoys working with younger players and I can promise you that's not always the way it is. Uh, I think Donnie and the coaching staff have done an amazing job of really um, being able to focus on today and how do we get better, but actually um, take a step back and look at the long game for our young players and say, what do we need to do to help them become better, you know, over the course of a season? And I'll give you an example of, you know, we pulled young player out here or there at the lineup for a game. And it wasn't a punishment. It was actually sometimes a catch your breath, you know, take it all in and how let's see how you take in the information that the coaches are giving you into the next game. And I, I think our coaching staff's done an amazing job of that. So they love young players and, uh, and they love talented players is what I probably should say. And that's what we want to fill this organization with talented, competitive players that, that, that want to be here. But with Savoy is... Go ahead. Uh, you've asked a couple. Um, as far as uh, the future of Kyle and Zepkis, Kyle said he wants to take some time. Um, I guess, do you want them back? And do you expect Kyle to play again? I yeah, of, of course. Want them back. I mean, they're, they're both um, really good. I mean, let me start with just people. They are uh, as respected and as good of people as you'll find in the game. Um, and they complement each other well. You know, Zemgis is, a, I, would, I would call, a quiet leader, um, goes about his business, um, but cares about his teammates, and the teammates care about him. And... He's, he's literally um, the same every game. You know, there's very, very little drop off or ups and downs with him. Um, so, you know, certainly want to have the conversations with him at the right time. You know, I talked to him after the season and said, take a little time to catch your breath and, you know, be in touch and we'll just, we'll talk. You know, we'll see. It has to, it has to make sense for both sides, but um, in terms of what his value as this team has is, is been great. Uh, Kyle, I think I can't say enough good things about him um, as a person. What he's done in that locker room, um, the way he carries the message um, from Donnie and the coaching staff through to the team, his selflessness uh, to be able to mentor and bring along players. Um, I see it over and over again, day after day after day. Players, um, they're down, they're, you know, they're whatever's going on in their life, you know, they're, they're talking to him. And I just think it's, we're lucky to have him. So for sure, want to be respectful to him, want him to go through the process that he needs to go through when you come off of a grueling season and spend his time with Danielle and the kids and kind of, you know, catch his breath. And I just told him, um, you know, at the right time, we'll talk and, and we'll see where we go. But I just, um, he's, he's a really good captain for us. After a full season in the American Hockey League, where's Kulik at now? Do you, do you see him more NHL ready now? Is is has he gotten? To, has he developed this year into a place where he is NHL ready? Huge steps. You know, I think what's remarkable about his season is to do it at the age he's doing it. Um, you know, just is, well, first of all, it's very rare for a player that age to even play in that league because of the rules and how it all works. But um, 
it's a it's a grind in the American Hockey League, and it's physical, and there's no easy ice out there, and you have to earn your offense. And so, what we saw in in him was uh, a maturing part of his game. You know, where he started figuring out how he had to play to have offense. Kind of reminds me a little bit of um, what J.J. Paterka went through last year, where once the details of his game started to get better, and you know, even in his own zone, he had the puck more. But he's also played a lot of center there this year, which is a great sign for us. So, um, yeah, I think he's one of these guys that we know has a really bright future for us. I'm not going to timeline it because I think you know he's he's still learning and growing. And um, you know, I would I'll kind of say what I said before. If we think it's right and it's the best thing for him you know, we'll make sure that we have a spot. But I also think that there's a lot still that he's learning and, you know, as he comes along. Captain, any update on that? Uh, we've had conversations uh, since his college season has ended. It's kind of, uh, I guess the best way to say it is they know kind of where we're at, um, you know, how we feel about him. Um, and we think he's a good prospect. And now it's just kind of in his court and, um, you know, we're waiting. Nice first season in Rochester. Uh, is there any possibility that any of the other Russian players, whether it's Noichev or Novikov or Pol Poltapov, come over uh, next season? I don't know what their contracts that. Yeah, are, Poltapov still has a has a contract, um, so no on him. Um, you know, we we think highly of uh, of these prospects and we track them very closely. And I do want to say our development staff has done a done a really um, nice job with these guys in terms of. Um, communication, the, the limited ways you're able to, um, especially with Ruslan, our scout is a translator uh, at times, just making sure they understand what we're all about here in the organization and, you know, the development staff and Jason Kermanos, I give uh, a lot of credit to just for kind of staying engaged there. Um, these are guys that we would, yeah, we're excited about. And there's rules about, you know, when you can or can't um, do things, but um, as soon as we're able to, we're hoping to... Uh, to take the next step with those guys. You know, there's a million what ifs you can go through in a season. And one thing I wanted to circle back and ask you about is, did you ever have any conversations with Colin Campbell, Chris King, any of those types about the fashioning play in New York, which turned into a pretty huge play as time went on? Oh, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I was just starting to feel better about the after the earlier <laughs> question. Um, yes, I did. And, uh, yeah, it, it's really hard, okay, because I do understand the emotion, um, but I, ha I struggled with the rationale because it looked pretty clear to me, um, and I it basically was that they didn't agree with me, you know. Um, I think it is hard. There's a lot of uh, gray area, especially in that role. I mean, I think we even saw it in the Ottawa game, right, the Giroux, and I uh, was very confused on that as well. Um, but I acknowledge it's not as simple as maybe I think it is for scored against. Um, but I definitely had conversations. Do you think that's going to come up with the draft? Well, uh, these things always come up, and they and it came up, you know, at the GM meetings, and um, you know what you're what you're always trying to guard against is like emotion. You know, if uh, someone it happened the night before to them, and you know, someone's pounding the table. So the league does a phenomenal job, I think, of getting data and just really like taking the emotion out and trying to show the managers and, and not just in this, but a lot of different areas of the game. So I do think overall um, the, the relationship between the general managers and the league, I think, I think everybody really um, tries to focus on the good of, good of what's good for the game type of thing, but it's not easy. Um, so I do think it'll come up again. I just think anything with these are, that are in these gray areas are hard, you know, because you and I might watch the exact same clip and not have, I think on this one we agreed, but I'm not sure on uh, all we would, you know, so and I think that's the hard thing. You've mentioned over the last year not wanting to block young players from the lineup. Do you still feel like that'll be the case this summer? Do you feel like you're kind of entering a window where maybe you would add more from the outside? Uh, yeah, like, um, I, I think we're open to what we think moves the needle and, and helps us, you know, keep taking steps forward. So I really believe that um, what we've gone through with this season, 
Um, you know, even thinking back to the year before and some of the steps that we, we were taking um, were instrumental to propel us for the next step. Um, so we always want to have organizationally, just philosophically, I'll tell you, you know, a funnel of, of the ability to move players up when they're ready. Um, you know, you have to make hard decisions when, you know, there's certain players that maybe you don't necessarily um, want to move them, but you feel like, hey, we have to create a spot here because this player is now ready. I mean, that's, that's our goal, you know, and that's why I, I talk so much about you can't make emotional, you know, short-term decisions or try to do something that strays from the plan just to get a little better, which may hurt you in the long run. We want to be able to get in the playoffs year after year after year and have sustainable success that helps us compete. And, you know, I, I know this is something that's, the playoffs is a goal, you know, but ultimately, you know, we want to win Stanley Cup and we want to give ourselves a chance to win every year because we're just in that, you know, mode of where we're, we're getting ourselves in the playoffs and we're fighting. So that's a process, but, um, so I don't know if, I, if I'm answering your question perfectly, but I think um, we want to get better. So we're going to look at every way we can do that. Um, and sometimes getting better means promoting from within and letting your younger players or players um, like use the Rusek that came up and played if we think he's ready, even though he's not, you know, a 20 year super young prospect, maybe it's him, you know, so those are the things that we'll talk about all summer. Okay, but it would seem like a factor that um, if you look at this back at the season home record, um, and maybe it's a better question for Don, but from where you sit, I mean, if you can you know, swing a few games your way in that factor, it, it helps get you over the top. From where you sit, what factored in to those numbers? Yeah, it's a great question, Adam. I think it's a little bit of a head-scratcher, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I mean, our, I think our play on the road was fantastic overall and really won some tough games and tough buildings and just the way we played. So excited about that. Do we need to improve at home for sure? I think there's... Um, I'll give you my my theory, and I think I, I feel I've asked enough questions that I have a handle on this. We have a really, really impressive group of young players that care, and they care when they go on this ice at home, and they do not want to let these fans down. And I think they sometimes got tight almost, and f we played we played a little away from our identity. We got. We just didn't look like ourselves at times, and I think it, it, we were squeezing it a little bit or we were trying too hard at times. Um, I honestly believe that, and I do think our guys, um, it's something we talked about internally, they took it to heart a little bit when we came out. If we struggled and there was some booing going on, and they're, they're young players, and they, they it, it really bothered them because they care. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's fascinating that our record was – better when we had when more than whatever the fans were. I can't remember what the number 17 or 16,000 or whatever it was. And part of that's because, like, the energy we get out of the fans in the building. So I can't wait for the day where this building's full every night, um, where I don't see um, thousands and thousands of jerseys from other teams. And, I, you know, it's just filled with the, the fan base that I know we have. And I know our players want that. So um, I think all that ties together. And um, I think as our guys mature, too, they'll understand that you just go play at home. You don't have to put on a show. You don't have to. Um, maybe I pushed it too much over the last couple of years about us having to earn everything. You know, it's, you heard me say it every well, You guys heard me say it, but these guys heard me say it all the time. We have to earn the trust, earn the respect back. And I think they, they took that to heart, which I love, but um, maybe almost tried too hard. You know, that's yeah. it's a theory. I can't I can't prove it, but that's just how I feel. Did Casey Middlestad really play his way into your plans uh, beyond this season with what he showed you, especially from the holiday break from McDonald's? Yeah, Casey, I'm really happy I'm really happy for Casey the way he um, you know, it was a tough year last year for him and just kind of finding his way um, back this year with his health and you know you could see early in the year that he was a little bit what I just talked about he was he was trying so hard almost and then as, as he kind of let go and just you could see his talent and you could see his um, compete and he brings an element to our our forward group that's a little unique and different I think he has a phenomenal ability to to extend possession to he's really good on the wall he's slippery in tight areas and you know and he's a he's got great vision I think 
he can play wing or center. You know, I even asked him in the exit meetings if you, you know, you had to play one. He's like, I don't care. You know, he's completely comfortable at either, either and he can play with anyone. So, yeah, he's he's become a really important player for us, and and I couldn't be more excited for him because he's put the work in. I know you're going to certainly give Savoy every opportunity in training camp, but it's so interesting the decision you have to make. This is complicated by the rules, of course. How much, you know. Maybe he knocks your socks off and makes makes the team, but if that doesn't happen, how much is he almost the equivalent of what maybe Shane Wright went through this year? Yeah, it's something we're, we're going to spend definitely more time on. He's, you know, for the, those of you who don't know, he's really had a tremendous season, you know, in the Western Hockey League, and obviously they're in the playoffs right now, and we've always, you know, our development guys have been around, but, you know, want to be respectful to him as he's in this kind of playoff journey with, with James Patrick, by the way, that Jeeves, uh, you know, coaching him. So, um but I, you know, it's tricky. You know, you're balancing uh, a player like that if they if they outgrown junior. Um, is the NHL too much for him? You know, where do you go? But it's something we'll talk about this summer a little bit. The Shane Wright was interesting the way it played, where he got his feet wet a little bit. Then you know he was able to get to the American League on a conditioning for a couple of weeks, and then he was able to get to World Juniors. And all of a sudden now he went went back to junior in January, so or around then. So. Um, it is an interesting thing. I, I think at the end of the day, um, we will do we'll do whatever we believe is in the best interest of him. Um, kind of, you know, balancing all the stuff I just said. So, um, but he's a, he's a good prospect. We're excited about him. What's your evaluation of where you guys stand from a salary cap standpoint? Obviously, a lot of teams would kill to have the flexibility that you have, but you also alluded to Darlene and power and you know potential there. Do you feel like you still have a lot of flexibility, or is it now making sure? that you can lock up core guys and really have this thing set up for the future. Yeah, I think that's the tricky thing with cap space. And when you look, you know, the last two years, we've been intentional with how we were doing things in terms of building our roster and making sure that, you know, we were developing players. And, you know, so all of this has been our plan. Um, we certainly know we're going to be stepping, you know, into another part of this plan next year. And then, um, you know, Mark Jakubowski does a great job upstairs of kind of forecasting and looking at uh, roster projections. And um, you get to the cap very quickly after next season, you know, just based on where we project contracts and how we see things moving forward. So the reason I tell you that is because it sounds great to say, hey, let's go get this guy and, you know, whether it's free agent or make a trade this summer because uh, we got the room. Well, you know, we might have the room um, this year, but and now quickly you maybe have squeezed someone else out or whatever it is. So we're always looking at ways to improve, but we want to be mindful of um, the group we have. And I truly do believe that when you have a core, you want to reward your own core and you want to um, draft, develop, um, you know, and then retain. And I think if that's the that's a philosophy kind of, you know, a pillar of ours that we're going to stick with. Doesn't mean we won't look outside and try to make our team better, but that is something we think a lot about. Look at Rasmus Dahlin's season. I mean, he obviously hit another level after last year. Just what allowed him, in your opinion, to reach another level? Yeah, Ras, uh well, he, he is uh, ultra competitive. He is one of the type of guys that is obsessed with being the best. And that can be, in some ways, at times it can hurt you because you're putting so much pressure and you're, you're trying to um, do, just accelerate everything. And he comes in the league as an 18-year-old and you're not, even, you're not even a man yet. And he's, you know, and now he's been in the league and he's experienced this league and understands it and attacked it this year. And I think Donnie um, has done a great job with Marty Wilford and Dan Girardi, you know, and the kind of, you know, helping him and helping him grow. My message to, to Rasmus is always, you know, just try to be your best. Get up every day and be the best version of yourself and be who you are and you're going to be great, which he is. You know, I, I mean, I know I'm biased, but I look at him as one of the top in the world um, at what he does. And he's just taking huge steps. And I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more proud of him, but I also know how much work he's put into this. And I still think he's going to get better. You know, you hear me say that a lot, but he's another player that I believe will keep getting better. Kevin, I know you touched on it a little bit earlier, but 
you know, looking at this past season and the growth and the steps that you guys have taken, how do you feel like that's a testament to your emphasis and your focus on, you know, investing in the long-term success or sustainable success? Yeah, I think, um, like, it's really hard in this business to, to make predictions or say, hey, this is going to happen. But when you really dig deep in especially around the draft and you get to know the people or um, even a young player that we trade for like a Devin um, you have certain belief based on what you've seen and the work they've done that if they are put in the right um, setting they can thrive and that's where I go back to kind of what I alluded to earlier with the coaching staff and how great of a job they've done propping these guys up and setting them up for success but it's really important you know I uh, this leaks hard and my style is that we're all in this together. There's no walls, there's no um, separation, depending on, you, everybody talks to everybody. Um, and I think that helps our young players too, to be honest with you, because they know they can, they, there's no fear, right? Like they can walk into Donnie's office, they can walk into my office, they can all talk to each other. I just think that's the culture we have and that we work hard to build. And I, I think it allows our young players to accelerate their development. Tyson Jost and how he fits in long term. Yeah, Tyson, I, I, I feel, is, uh, was a really um, unique opportunity for us, I'll call it, during when he went on waivers because here's a player that, you know, at the time I think it was 24, you know, 400 games experience, was in an organization in Colorado where, you know, and he and I talked a lot about this this year, where they were, he saw the struggles, and then unfortunately for him, got traded last year when they're, you know, in their Stanley Cup year. Um, but had a lot of great um, learning and opportunities and experiences in his time there that he brought, you know, and obviously then he was in Minnesota. And we just felt talented player um, that would, would help our group and fit with our group, which he did. Yeah, I think, um, I think he's versatile. We'll have those conversations coming up here now as we kind of really dig into our, reflect on our season and then look forward to the next season. But, um, you know, for me, it's, a, it's overall been really positive with Tyson. Uh, not a lot of goalies skip the AHL, and I know he's going to have to earn the net, like Donnie said, but by the time you know whether he earned the net, you've missed the window to potentially add another another goalie. So how do you kind of balance, like, it's a bit of a leap of faith knowing whether he will be ready to, to jump in there and, and knowing whether you need to add? Well, I think, you know, like I said before, every every player's different, you know, and I hate um, thinking about it as like putting a guy into a box and saying this is what you have to do. I think you have, in my opinion, what you have to do is be open-minded and take all the information in and then make the best decision you can um, for the organization and the player. Devin's very unique, um, but the way we, I want our players to be fearless, and that's how we're going to run the organization too. Um, Donnie, myself, we are going to be fearless and we're going to trust and believe in our players and when we think they're ready and in spots to succeed, we're going to, we're going to help them, you know. And so for me looking at Devin, I just, I, I, I see a, uh, a special um, person, I see a special work ethic, a special talent and, you know, we'll kind of evaluate, you know, here through the summer. Um, but I think in the small sample size, he really, you know, showed, you know, what he can do in this league, and it's exciting. Kevin, you haven't had to make too many free agency moves over the last two years. When did you become so confident this is our core group? Hmm. Uh, well, we're still evaluating, and, and, and you're always evolving your core group, um, but I guess... Going back a couple years, um, even more, maybe even some of the things I saw my first year. Um, I'll give you a quick story. I, I don't know if you guys remember it, but the exit meetings, you know, a few years ago now, um, were kind of split. The first, the older guys, it was tough. Those were some tough, tough meetings and ended up where we made some big decisions for the franchise. But I think you probably also remember that I came out of that being energized. Because I saw, you know, Dylan Cousins and Rasmus Dahlin, and you know, to start to name these guys, I saw the the look in their eye and the hunger, and um, so you're always learning and evaluating. Now we've accumulated, you know, this core that believes 
that we can do something special here. And you have to have talent, you have to believe, and then you have to be all in. Um, and that's how we're going to attack this. And now I think we'll always you know, evaluate who adds into that core, where a new piece is coming. Um, but I can stand here today, say that, man, I'm, I'm excited. I really am. I'm excited about the steps we've taken. We have a lot of work to do, um, but I'm really excited for the steps that we're going to take, too. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Man, I, I appreciate you. all of your uh, just hard work kind of uh, interactions with our players, the thoughtful ways you guys you know, ask the questions, and the respect that uh, you give myself, Donnie, the organization. So I want to make sure I say that. And we'll see you probably when the next few weeks, somewhere, combine, something. So, <laughs> all right, see you guys.